In the previous video, we discussed a way for fitting probability distributions to observed variables. And we chose to model such distributions with Gaussians and tested for the likelihood that the data was generated by this model. We then chose the model parameters that optimized this likelihood and this approach was called maximum likelihood optimization. This was an important first step uh, in moving towards a more probabilistic and Bayesian approach to data modeling. Now in this video we move one step further into this uh, Bayesian direction and consider to optimize parametric distributions via the principle of maximizing the posterior probability for the model weights given the observed data samples. I will now introduce the maximum posterior approach. So let's take a look what we did in the previous video. We have this set of observed uh, data samples um, x1 to xn and then in the maximum likelihood approach uh, we said okay we're going to model this distribution we're going to say that this data was drawn from some distribution which we model with model parameter w's and this basically gives me a likelihood of the data um, well the likelihood for the data given my model parameters what we then did we were simply going to maximize this likelihood and find the parameters that maximize this likelihood so now in the maximum a posteriori case we're going to uh, consider optimizing the posterior of the weights giving my data. So now we're going to look at this distribution, the distribution for the weights given my data. And I'm going to maximize this. So I'm going to maximize the posterior probabilities because this thing over here is called the posterior distribution. It is a distribution for, uh, it assigns probabilities for my model uh, parameters uh, given that I've observed, so after I observed my data. So we see that now we're going to change viewpoints, right? Because initially we considered distributions over my data, which were parameterized uh, by my weights W. So actually what we were optimizing over was a function, a function of W, uh, because D was fixed. And now we're going to change viewpoints and now we consider uh, the probability as a distribution over the weights given my observed data points. So we're going to uh, change viewpoints and we can do this using Bayes' theorem as we have seen uh, in one of the previous videos and uh, as we will see in uh, the next slide. Okay, so now consider again this regression case. So we have a data, we have observation that came in the form of input target pairs, input target, and this is denoted by the vector of input values and the vector of uh, corresponding target values. Then uh, we modeled uh, such data being generated uh, via a normal distribution whose mean was given by, uh, well, my true model. Uh, so Y models the relation between X and the target and it's modeled by a W parameter. So we say the target is centered around this prediction, but there's some noise associated with, associated with it. So my target values, they have some noise on it. And we modeled this probability distribution to be a normal or a Gaussian distribution. And this is the form of it, right? So we have this front factor and this exponential. Then in this maximum likelihood approach, we chose W such that the data likelihood is maximized. So we maximize the likelihood and we showed that this corresponds to maximizing the log of the likelihood because taking the log of the things of the thing which you optimize over doesn't change the location of the optima. Now a similar thing we are going to do also for the maximum a posterior case. Now we're not optimizing over uh, the likelihood but now we are optimizing over the posterior probabilities given my observed data and uh, given my uh, modeling parameter. So we here optimize over the posterior. Now we are going to recover the posterior probability uh, for uh, the weights W uh, using Bayes' theorem. And Bayes' theorem requires us to have access to a likelihood function. Well, we have that. And uh, we require a prior. And basically this prior encodes my prior knowledge or assumption on what these weights should look like. So I have an idea that uh, maybe some weights are more probable than others and I'm going to model this with this 
prior probability distribution. And this probability distribution can be parameterized by an, an, an additional parameter alpha. Uh, we'll see an example soon. Now given that, uh, the posterior distribution is derived from the likelihood of my data given my model parameters uh, w and my uh, precision parameter uh, beta. times my uh, prior probability which is conditioned on some uh, some parameter alpha so we have here the likelihood times the prior and, and this is normalized with the evidence okay so Bayes theorem gives us a way for uh, converting my uh, prior knowledge in combination with the likelihood. So we have the likelihood of the data given my model parameters, and I have a prior on my model parameters. And this is a normalization constant, which could be rewritten in terms of what we see here in the numerator. We saw that in one of the previous videos. Now, when we optimize uh, with over W, uh, we are only really interested in the terms in the numerator because this thing doesn't depend on W. So so we often write that um, the posterior is proportional to uh, the likelihood times the prior. Okay, so let me write this, that down. This term does not depend on W. So that's why we often omit it. Okay, so we set out to maximize the posterior. So that's what we see over here. And also in this case, uh, it is convenient to work with the log of the posterior. So this is equivalent to optimizing over the log of the posterior probability. And this is the case because the log doesn't change the location of the optimal values for W. Now, using Bayes' theorem, we could write the posterior in, in terms of a product of a likelihood with a prior uh, divided by the evidence. Now, um, with this log, these products split into a sum of these three separate terms. So we see that we're actually optimizing over, let's write it out, we take the argmax with respect to W of the log of the likelihood. plus the log of the prior minus the log of the evidence. Now we already saw that this uh, evidence doesn't depend on W. So what we're really optimizing over is uh, these two terms. So we take the argmax of the log likelihood plus the log of the prior. And this gives us the maximum a posteriori uh, estimate for W. Okay, now we also have to deal with a model for the prior. So we're going to model the prior distribution also with a Gaussian distribution because these Gaussians are convenient to work with as we have uh, seen so far. And what is typically done is that you assume that the weights uh, that describe our model, let's say we have M of these weights, uh, we assume that uh, the values for each of these individual weights, weights is close to zero. So that's my prior um, assumption that my weights shouldn't be too large. They should be close to zero. Um, but I put some uncertainty on their value. I mean, they can deviate from zero. And so I have this precision parameter that allows me to change my prior, uh, prior belief of these, these weights with some uh, precision parameter alpha. Okay, so I can do this. Um, I also assume that the weights are uncorrelated, so they're independent of each other. So this joint probability on the weights um, is split into this product of all these individual priors for each of the individual weights. So I can write this out. Um, so I assumed a Gaussian distribution, so that gives me a front factor of alpha divided by 2 pi to the power m over 2 times uh, the product of all these uh, exponentials 
e to the power minus alpha over 2 w i w i. Now we also know that uh, the product of all these exponentials, uh, we can also just sum uh, their powers, uh, which makes it look maybe a bit more friendly. So let's do that. So we still have this front vector, alpha over two pi to the power m over two times this exponential now to the power minus alpha over two and then the sum of i of all these w i times w i. And now it's actually more convenient to, to, to switch back to uh, this uh, vector notation. So we have a vector of all these w's and what we see here is really an inner product, right? So we see the sum over the coefficients uh, squared. So maybe it's more convenient to write here w transpose w. Okay, so this is the form that my uh, prior takes. So this is my model for the prior. It's a multivariate Gaussian distribution with zero mean and some variance or some precision on um, what values these uh, w's can take. Okay, now let's plug this into our optimization framework. Uh, we set out to maximize the posterior, uh, but often we prefer to talk in terms of minimizing some error function. So uh, the equivalent problem is minimizing the negative log of the posterior. So we minimize uh, the negative log of the posterior, which split into this uh, likelihood term and this prior term. We saw that over here. We have this likelihood term and a prior term, and this term doesn't contribute to the solution. Now let's purely focus on uh, the prior term. So the maximum a posteriori solution for w is found via the arc min with respect to w of the negative log likelihood. I'm just going to leave it for what it is for the moment. Minus the log of the prior. So we're going to take the logarithm of this thing and I'm going to ignore this term because it doesn't depend on w. And then the log of this exponential would give us actually minus, so this becomes a plus, plus alpha over two w transpose w. So what we see here is that the maximum a posterior estimate is given by minimizing uh, the log likelihood plus some extra error term that penalizes uh, the weights in a quadratic way. Okay, so we just derived uh, the log of the, the prior, that's this thing over here, that's, it's a quadratic penalty, and now we're going to insert the log of the likelihood. And the likelihood for an individual data sample was given by this thing, the likelihood of the entire data set is given by uh, the product of all uh, these items. So. Um, that's what I'm going to take the log off of the product of all these things. And I'm going to ignore the front factor. And that would give us, give us actually the log of the likelihood is given by the sum over all my data sa uh, samples weighted by beta over 2. So this uh, minus disappears because I'm taking the min, uh, the negative log likelihood. And then of this term, t minus y x w squared. So we see that uh, the maximum a posteriori estimate for uh, w is given by this least squares problem which is regularized with some uh, quadratic penalty on w. Now similar as in uh, the maximum likelihood case we were modeling the data to be uh, distributed according to this predictive uh, distribution. So for a fixed x I obtain a distribution for um, the possible target values. And this distribution was param parameterized now via the optimal uh, solution for W. So in our case, this predictive distribution then is, is parameterized or is modeled with a Gaussian of the random variable T, which has a mean which is centered around my, uh, well, my model's uh, prediction and which has some precision or variance associated. And this variance is now also modeled. It's still an, a free parameter in, a, in, in this entire model. So with this predictive distribution, we can say given uh, a particular input x, uh, 
I can assign probabilities to uh, the cross to, to some target values. So I'm not going to make decision what the exact target value is. I can only say what is the most likely target value. And if you want a point estimate, I can give you a point estimate. Then let's choose the expected value um, of uh, this random variable t relative to this uh, predictive distribution. And the expected value of a Gaussian is given by its mean. And its mean is given by this model, which takes an input x and transforms it in a way that is parameterized by my obtained uh, maximum a posteriori estimates uh, w. So we saw that both uh, the maximum likelihood approach as well as the maximum posterior approach provide ways to um, come up with predictive distributions. In the maximum likelihood approach, my estimates were given uh, via a least squares problem, the solutions to the least squares problem, and in the maximum posterior case, uh, the, the most probable weights were given via a regularized least squares problem.